All right, let's talk about value objects or domain objects, okay? Again, when I say value objects, I'm talking about domain objects. If I'm dealing with a stock trading system, we're dealing with trades, we're dealing with open and closing prices, we're dealing with companies, symbols, right? Each one of these things or nomenclature or the vernacular that we utilize to talk about our business, those things have some form of value, usually done by a DBA or some you know server-side developer who had a hand in that. Said, so let's look, I need to get a set of records and join them together, whether join out or join whatever, to get a trade or to get a position or a company, right? If I'm dealing with a game, I need to get some high scores, I need to get some users, right? These nouns that we're using are actually something that you would code around, right? That's the domain object. The value objects and domain objects you utilize in a GUI, you can actually decorate with different properties to make it easier to visually represent them, to retain state. So for example, I might have a VO with a person that has a get first name function, right? Or a get name function, which makes the name pretty for displaying fields, right? Or handles locale. So for example, if um, they have a title and their name, they're like the manager or the VP of engineering. Well, in Espanol, whatever's the locale, it can actually handle that kind of stuff internally, right? It depends on how you do locales. Lua has none of that, it's all to you. So anyway, that's one way the domain objects can help, right? They actually help the GUI do things. Server, why would they care about that stuff, right? And then other people argue, well, you know, isn't the server's responsibility to do locale? Well, it is. But sometimes you wouldn't know until you're on the client, right? And you can actually map it to different ways. So it's how much offload do you want to do? You want to offload to the server, or do you have a high high load server? And it's easy for the client developers to do that, right? So I mean, that's the point of domain objects, right? They are the piece of data that you're dealing with, the single person. A lot of times these VOs are put in lists or collections or array collections or Java lists, right? They're delivered to you. And sometimes they can be models. Now this is where I get fuzzy. Is it is the value object a model or not? If the value object changes, do people listen for it and react and draw? They can, it's up to you, right? But the point is most value objects are sometimes converted from DTOs that you know respond to the server. Sometimes they're the same thing, a value object and a DTO. They're both sent across the wire JSON. So it, you gotta be careful when, when you're done with your team. Like is it a value object or a model, okay? In Lua, it's just a reference to what your data is, that's all. So whenever, whenever the server sends you DTOs, you make VOs from it, you can differ from the server like I've already stated. Okay, models usually contain them, usually. So we, when we have a person, uh, let's say an employee model, right? An employee model has all employees for the company. It's assumed that it has a list of employee VOs for each person in the company. But in things like Sencha, in things like Flex, in things like uh, you know even Angular, you would have model within a model, right? Or that that would have a, a model collection in a model. So. VO and models can, can differ. Models are usually participants in the framework. Value objects are just a piece of JSON or just a data object, okay? VO gotcha. So, or models. <laughs> do you build yourself or do you have a factory do it? Some people like VOs doing it because they can, even in Lua, they can look at the top, see the properties that they're supposed to be dealing with. First name, last name, age, date of birth, location, company, position, right? And they can they can snag these things from the JSON that they've snagged from, let's say, I don't know, Wireshark, Charles, looking through Chrome Network Browser, or some JSON that the server side guy actually sent them, right? So they could parse it out, right, when they're first starting the project. Or you have a factory. The problem with the factory is you can't actually, you know, see that and really quickly parse it, but the factory helps eliminate dry more quickly. Additionally, it's easier to not pollute your VOs with anything more than just property values, to actually look at it and see what it is, right? Java and a lot of higher level languages, C Sharp and others have tags and annotations that allow these objects to be serialized and get rid of stuff. Lua has none of that, right? So do you want, you know, readable VOs? Like, so you can quickly reference like, okay, this is, uh, this is a person, this is I'm getting across the wire, this is how I need to build the GUI, right? I'm gonna give this to my junior developers and move on. Or is that something you wanna parse so people who have parsed can see where, you know, without thinking where the problem would be? Why would I have a factory class parse that? I don't understand. It's just an opinion on the team. You just need to figure it out. Keep in mind, I mean, this is really your data model. So if it changes, it affects the entire app. Same with same with models, right? Somewhere, some view is referencing some property has to change. And with Lua, because you don't have really get compiler help, you're going to need to know that. Hopefully, you have unit tests.